This is the Fire Cycle 3 multi cycle fire sprinkler system. Now, this particular system we're using here in our demonstration is set up for pre action, and we're using the model J1 flow control valve. Now, the flow control valve is a unique valve to uh, Fire Cycle 3 and some of our other fire sprinkler systems that are out there. Uh, it looks a lot like our Model F deluge valve, but in, in fact, it's a flow control valve, which is a little bit different than the standard deluge valve. So this valve, uh, as a flow control valve, needs to be used in conjunction with the Fire Cycle 3 system. And some of the other parts that are uh, kind of unique to the system and need to be used specifically to make the system function include the VFR 400 release control panel. Now the VFR 400 release control panel uses uh, programming uh, that's already in the panel itself. You just have to select the right panel. But basically the programming that's in the panel, um, it's just a matter of landing the wires where they need to go in the contacts and then switching it to the correct program and the system will function with the Fire Cycle 3 system. Uh, the trim pack that's uh, above me here on the wall itself has, uh, it's basically pre-trimmed and it comes together in the unit itself. And in order to connect it to the system here, we're just using stainless steel hoses that are listed with the unit itself. Now one of the other things that's unique about Fire Cycle 3 are the heat detectors that are being used uh, above my head here. Those heat detectors would be used in uh, the protected area where the riser is going to protect or where the system is going to function. Uh, and what's unique about those is that they're the Viking Model B and the Viking Model C uh, heat detectors. Now these heat detectors must be used specifically with Fire Cycle 3 system and cannot be substituted for any other uh, initiating devices that are out there. Now these detectors are wired in a series circuit unlike the typical detector or initiating devices that are wired in a parallel circuit. So that's one of the key differences uh, with these particular uh, detectors. Now the system is currently set up in a single interlock and how the system would function is a heat detector would operate, the heat detector would send its signal to the VFR 400 and the VFR 400 would in turn open or power open the normally closed solenoid. When that solenoid opens, prime water from within the valve's prime chamber will be released and the water supply will push into the system piping where it will wait for a fire sprinkler to be fused or released before water is discharged from the fire sprinkler itself. Now, where it gets unique for the Fire Cycle 3 system is basically what happens next. And when the fire sprinkler discharges its water and the temperature in the room begins to get reduced because the fire is controlled, uh, the heat detector will automatically reset and the VFR 400 release control panel will pick up on that. The VFR 400 release control panel will then uh, initiate a soak timer. Uh, that soak timer is programmed into the uh, unit itself uh, and it can be adjusted uh, in a couple different fashions. So once that soak timer then expires, the power uh, is released from the normally closed solenoid, which puts it back into its normally closed state because it was powered open. And when that closes, it allows the prime water to back up into the prime valve uh, prime chamber uh, of the valve and will close the valve itself which will shut off the water to the fire sprinkler system. Now in the event that the temperature in the room begins to elevate again the heat detector will pick up on it it'll send the signal to the VFR 400 the VFR 400 will open or power open the normally closed solenoid that will release that prime water water will push through the valve into the system now it'll be discharged from the already open fire sprinkler and it'll begin to cool or control the fire within that room again. So it's multi-cycling because it'll continue off and on uh, to be able to do that to control the fire. Um, but that is one of the unique systems or one of the unique things about this particular system is that it has that multi-cycle ability. Now the other unique thing about this system is uh, although it's set up in a pre-action system, uh, currently single interlock, it could be double interlock, but pre-action systems require the use of electricity. So we have to have uh, AC power, and in the event of an AC power failure, we have the batteries or the DC power. But over an extended period of time, if our batteries were to fail, and we no longer had uh, electricity available to operate the panel, uh, whether it be AC power or DC power, the system will uh, change over and operate mechanically, so to speak, as a dry pipe fire sprinkler system. So even in an extended power outage, uh, where we don't have any AC or DC power, the system will still function, and that's kind of unique to uh, Fire Cycle 3 um, 
and pre-action in general, because again, normal pre-action systems require uh, AC power to, to make them function. So the two major benefits here is the multi-cycling capability. Multi-cycle capability is, uh, is huge because it will reduce the amount of water damage uh, that's occurring. And the, uh, the other option is that it gives us, or the other ability is that it gives us um, protection even in an extended power outage. So we can still function uh, even though it's pre-action, it'll then switch over and mechanically operate as a dry fire sprinkler system. We'll go ahead and activate our heat detector. So with a heat gun, we'll activate our heat detector here. When the heat detector activates, we'll see a drop in our prime water pressure and water will go into the system piping where it'll then wait for a sprinkler to fuse. So at this point, we have a loss of prime water pressure. Water has pushed into the system piping, but we're waiting for the fire sprinkler to fuse to allow the air pressure to be pushed out by the water that's trying to enter into that system piping. I've operated the trip test connection, and with the trip test connection in the open position, the simulates a fused fire sprinkler, so now our water is being discharged from the trip test connection. So what will occur here is on our screen, our screen will indicate, uh, it'll count backwards basically, the uh, soak timing. So in this case we have it set for 30 seconds, it's counted backwards, but that soak timer only initiates after the heat detector uh, cools down. So it's very important to understand that it's only after the heat detector cools down. Now once that heat detector cools down and we count backwards, uh, that will close the solenoid, our prime water pressure will be reestablished, and then the valve will begin to build its prime water pressure in the prime chamber. As you can see, the prime water has just been reestablished, and the system has shut down, so our water has stopped discharging out of the fire sprinkler system itself. So right now we hear a little bit of gurgling and that's because our air is continuously trying to build, but the water pressure that was in that piping that has stopped flowing into it is just kind of sputtering out to our trip test connection. But now that that water has cleared through, the only thing that we have discharging uh, from the fire sprinkler itself is the little bit of air pressure that the air maintenance device is trying to put back into it. So to shut down the fire cycle three system and basically get it prepared to uh, be restored, we're simply going to close the system control valve here in the front to stop water from going into the system piping. And then we have a few drains to operate. So while we're doing that, I'm going to silence the VFR 400 panel. We're going to close my system control valve here with the system control valve in the closed position. I'm going to open my drains. I have three drains. I have a system main drain here, which is located on the top. This is the system main drain because it's located above the system check valve. This check valve is what traps the air pressure into the system piping. So it's also going to prevent any water from coming backwards. So I got to open my system main drain to clear out the system piping. I'm also going to shut off my air pressure here so that stops uh, flowing into the uh, system piping. I'm going to open my lower drain, which is our flow test connection. And then I have a third drain here, which is going to be an auxiliary drain that communicates directly to the outlet chamber. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. Now, with all the system being drained, we've got to make sure that if we have any low point drains or auxiliary drains in the field, that those drains are uh, given some attention and taken care of and then restored uh, accordingly. So with that uh, transpiring here, We'll give it a second to drain out, and then we're going to go ahead and do the restore uh, of the system itself. To restore the Fire Cycle 3 fire sprinkler system, what we're going to do first is we're going to get uh, anything repaired in the field that uh, might have been the, the cause of the, of the trip, right? So in a fire condition, we're going to have to repair some fire sprinklers or replace some fire sprinklers. Uh, if we were using a trip test connection, we're going to have to go ahead and close that trip test connection because the first step is going to be to reestablish our air pressure in the system piping. So I'm going to close my trip test connection. 
In this case, I am using the uh, D2 air maintenance device. So I'm going to start air flowing into my system with that uh, air maintenance device. And I'm going to close the system main drain, which is located on top of the check valve. Again, this check valve is going to hold our air pressure back, and the drain communicates above that check valve on the system side. So I need to close that to get our air pressure to reestablish. So you can see our air pressure here is beginning to reestablish. If need be on the uh, D2 air maintenance device, you can use the quick fill uh, on the bottom. You just want to make sure you close that, um, you know, about 10 PSI before you get to where you need to close or shut down so that way you can go through the regulated air. So we have our air pressure here on the, on the system reestablished. And uh, what we're going to do now is we want to make sure that we have prime water in the chamber itself. Now, we didn't do anything with the prime water valve. We left that prime water valve in the open position. Uh, and because the soak timer and everything had originally expired, our prime water pressure gauge has really been reestablished. So we already have prime water pushing this valve in the closed position. So I have my air pressure and my prime water pressure already reestablished. Now, if I had closed this valve, I would need to open it to get the prime water pressure back in to close the valve itself. So at this point, what we're going to do is with the air pressure established, with our prime water reestablished, we're going to go ahead and reset our VFR 400 panel. And we should get a supervisory signal that comes back, and that's going to tell us that our system control valve is still in the closed position. So we have a valve tamper supervisory. We're going to go ahead and silence that. And what we're going to do at this point is we're going to get our water supply back on and get the uh, system back in service. So we're going to take our auxiliary drain that communicates to the outlet chamber and get that closed. We're going to take our flow test connection in the back and we're going to partially close that flow test connection. And then we're going to open our system control valve. With our system control valve open and flowing water, we'll then fully close our flow test connection in the back to get our water pressure reestablished. That's going to show up over here on our uh, city water or our water supply gauge. And with that completely open, our system control valve completely open, we're going to come into the VFR 400 and we're going to reset that and that'll clear out any remaining signals that are with the VFR 400. At this point, the Fire Cycle 3 system has been completely restored.